With Intel cutting off any chance of another line of Atom chips and the last time we looked at them being the Ancient N series, it's time we truly found out if the Atom deserved to be cancelled by taking a look at the last ones ever made. This right here is a Cherry Trail based Atom chip and well that's the architecture of the final series of Intel Atom processors released in early 2016. The CPU featured in this machine is one of the most common ones in the lineup and is the Intel Atom X5Z8350 and it's an SOC style design so that's why I can't unfortunately show you what it looks like, I can just show you what we're testing. Based on the 14 nanometer design it has 4 cores that run at a speed of around 1.4 GHz but they have a boost speed up to 1.9 GHz, usually between 1.8 and 1.9. All around an upgrade from the atoms we've actually seen and tested before. But the main area where this little processor shines, well it's the average power consumption, something that was always relatively impressive, and this time it's a measly 2 watts. And even better than that, it's the price. It only costs around $20 or £15 to purchase, not that you'd actually be able to get a hold of one as they were only really sold to OEMs, but at that kind of price point you could see them being implemented into some semi decent systems, at least on the budget side of things. Only final part to mention is the graphical section of the device, which is based on the Intel HD 400 which we've seen a few times before in a few modern devices and it was alright. It comes in a few different variations but as I said that's something we'll definitely touch on later on in the video. So you may have noticed that I said this was the most common of the final atoms and the reason for that being well, it was the cheapest of them. There were three real variations to the final atoms with the top tier ones being very elusive nowadays and something that I might have the chance to test depending on how well you guys like this video. So to sum it up you've got the Z8300 which is the bottom tier chip we're testing here and is limited to single channel memory but very rarely actually affected the performance. Then up from here you get the Z8500 which is essentially the exact same chip but with dual channel memory and then at the top you've got the Z8700 which features 4 extra EUs on the graphical side as well as some slightly better CPU clocks and that dual channel memory from earlier. All in all though, they are very similar with the three chips performing around 20% difference between the bottom chips and the top chips. However, once again, if you want a video on that, I might be able to get hold of the best Atom ever released, depending on if people enjoy this one. Anyway, you may have noticed in the background I'm trying to install Windows on this, and it's been a while, and by that I mean it has been a long time trying to get it installed. And this brings us to issue number one. These Atom chips, virtually all of them because of their low price point, mostly found their way into tablets and hybrid laptop gimmicky product type things, which is the issue. See, you remember those netbooks that we used to test in the Atoms? Well, at least they had some sort of upgradability, you know, you could put an SSD in them and it would be nicer. See, that really isn't the case for Cherry Trail. Unfortunately, these devices find themselves hindered by storage. I know, it's, it sounds ridiculous, but these all got some sort of very slow, very basic EMMC style memory, which is similar to an SD card. It's not fast, it works, but it's slow, and it also degrades quite fast. So, you know, a lot of people end up blaming these atoms for being slow as that's the badge on the front when really it was the memory they were paired with that caused a lot of slowdown and you can see that by just trying to install Windows. So issue 1 isn't even related to the atom directly but affects it because you can't just go about sticking a new hard drive in there as, well, you can't. And there are options that let you but at that stage, you know, you're spending about £120 to get a system to use an atom, a basic spec atom, you know, you can get some sort of AMD Ryzen system for that kind of money nowadays. So that's why we're testing this version here, the most common one. Anyway, we'll be benchmarking on both de-bloated Windows 10 and Linux, and before anyone tries to tell me to use Windows 7, I did. I have tested it and I do mention it a few times and it performed virtually the exact same as Windows 10, so I've omitted it from actually being shown in the video really. Another issue I'm going to mention is that we're limited to 2GB of RAM. Which is once again a limit but, you know, we aren't really all too limited by it because the Atom itself, well, you'll see later on in the video that the RAM doesn't turn out to be much of a problem. In a few cases it can be though. You may be beginning to see why they have such a bad reputation though. The Atom itself doesn't seem too bad, especially specification wise, but when you're stuck with slow storage and you can't upgrade the RAM, well, you know, it can end up being pretty bad overall.
Just before we get into finding out how great or maybe how terrible the final of the atoms could be, I'm going to say that I probably covered the last of the old atoms, you know, the ones that were in netbooks and things like that in a very long old video. And this video is going to be touching on essentially the same tests but on those new atoms, so I do recommend going to check out that older video as it's something I'm quite proud of. And, you know, it kind of helps to find out how much they've improved. And I will be mentioning it in the video anyway. Well, from the get-go, the user experience on these things is a pain in the ass. At least compared to the older atoms, this is the one thing I did notice. That EMMC, it took three hours to install Windows, just writing to it. I'll be honest, I have heard the newer devices can be faster, and they usually are a bit, but you are still limited in speeds, especially write speed, and these machines do tend to degrade in terms of read and write speed, because it's EMMC memory, it's not a hard drive, it's not an SSD. With these things going from okay performers to very sluggish machines because of that actually. However, once we got the respective operating systems installed, I will say, this Atom is awesome at most tasks. Legitimately, it's really impressive. Web browsing? Absolutely great compared to the old Atoms. Once you had actually got it started, it was really, really nice. In fact, the biggest limit to me, regardless of Linux or Windows, was the fact that the drivers for these chips are a bit all over the place. That, and it's actually a common issue. It sounds ridiculous. Your display will have a tendency to start with the wrong orientation, and you have to track down drivers to put it the right way sometimes. It makes sense given the fact that most of these are tablet hybrid things, but this is actually an issue on some of the real laptop variants that are out there, and they could suffer with the same problem. I know, a bit strange, but still, that exists. But still, it's a really solid little processor for web browsing and general usage. You know, one area that really impressed me was the fact that I was able to do multitasking while running 1080p videos on this thing, and I really thought it would struggle, because, you know, the old atoms really struggled to even do 480p. But you know, in just a few years, and a little bit of technology, we have something that's doing multitasking with web browsing and 1080p YouTube, all while in the 2 watt envelope. It's really impressive. It's not going to be doing things like 4K decoding, but the time has come to, well, you know, see if we can ask ourselves if this last of an era chip can run some games, because that's why a lot of you came here, so why don't we jump straight into it? First of all, we have CSGO, which ran pretty damn terribly. Seeing an average of 9 FPS, even though it was only running in 240p, it would often give us a brief glimpse above this, but would immediately stutter back down frame rate wise. It seems the little atom was getting overloaded pretty fast, despite the graphics chip actually having a lot more to give. And before anyone says anything, I will be going with the Linux results at the end of the video, or at the end of the benchmarks, and it performed pretty much the same on that as well. To make things a little bit easier on the poor little processor, I thought I'd take it a few years back and ran the older CS Source, which ran much nicer with medium settings in the full resolution 800p resolution. It didn't matter what OS we used, we saw perfectly playable frame rates and could actually see what was going on on screen. In fact, it was perfect clarity and it did look quite nice. What was even more surprising was Fable, a game that previously was unplayable on this series of chips, at least when we tried it, was actually being ran in decent quality with a decent frame rate. Keep in mind it's only a small screen on most of these devices, so the resolution isn't actually that much of an issue, and the quality looked great even if it was, you know, set to low. Keep in mind that areas like Greatwood or areas with a high amount of NPCs could actually tank the FPS a little bit because of the CPU, but even then, it was still fully playable. Making things a bit more modern with this year's release of Islanders, a really fun indie title that you'd imagine would work really well on a device like this. And well, yes it worked, but no it wasn't really enjoyable. At least it'd be a bit of an exaggeration to call it a fun experience. The issue really was that the frame rate was so low, it was a bit of a pain in the ass to control, and the CPU did struggle to load in New Island, something that takes maybe two seconds to do on my main PC. I was actually waiting a solid minute for it to load in here. Still, all in all, new indie titles can be less than ideal on these atoms. However, this is where things get really surprising. Keep in mind that we could hardly run Morrowind before, and here we have an older AAA title with Skyrim, running with very low settings of course and a low resolution, and it was running with PS3 levels of consistency, which isn't really a compliment, but shows that the game was indeed playable on a chip that uses 2 watts. And all I can say is, I was able to play this for maybe 10-15 minutes, I was able to do a few quests, and really, that was really impressive. So we are running Skyrim on a little atom. 
with no tweaks. This is just the stock game, and it ran. So, yeah. Because people love to throw in some older titles, we have Half-Life 2, which runs on a newer version of the engine than CS Source. Still in 480p with slightly lowered settings, we were seeing an experience that borderline matched the original Xbox in quality, all while running at twice the frame rate, which I would definitely call a success. This was definitely one of the first titles we saw that would have benefited from the dual channel memory on higher end models, but either way, definitely playable. And I don't think anyone would be surprised when I say Quake 3 ran really well. I just let it launch with its default settings, and even throughout both benchmarks it never came to a stall. Nearly a 100% uplift from the last atoms, while running at the same settings. And then finally to round us off with, we have Minecraft, which was really hurting the CPU side of things. I mean, it did run but we needed to reduce a lot of the graphical settings and resolution, which really doesn't make sense, but unfortunately the CPU was struggling with some of the lighting effects and shadows, that it was to a stage where even though our GPU could probably handle it, yeah, we were really limited by that processor. Either way, this was the latest release, which can be very CPU heavy, and yes, we are using Optifine, so it did run, it was playable, although that CPU side definitely held us back, as I would have loved to have run the game in a higher resolution, but we were actually limited by the single channel memory bandwidth, one of the few instances where that does actually happen. But wait, this is a budget builds video, and I'm usually trying to test as much modern stuff as possible, and really, I haven't actually managed to run that much modern stuff. Well, don't get me wrong, I did try. Don't Starve wouldn't let me actually measure the frame rate, but did actually seem to run okay. And the usual games I test like GTA 5, well, even in 240p without shadows, I managed to get it started, which was a feat in itself. But once I got it running, because we only had 2 gigabytes of RAM, we were lucky if we could keep the game running for 5 minutes or so, as the game would like to crash a lot. I did try across different operating systems with lots of different drivers, and yes, I did, you know, try and test as much as possible, but I just couldn't keep the game running, so unfortunately most modern games, although the Atom seems to be able to run them, it's just limited by that RAM. So, you know, something that's completely out of your control. But still, that is the Intel Atom experience. We can't add any more. I did also test across Linux as well, and the results, well, they don't really show all too much difference, other than they ran about the same as they did on Windows. Sometimes slightly better, but mostly slightly worse. Really the same as that other Atom video I did, but to a lesser extent, because it's a slightly more modern processor, and there's slightly more to give under Windows. Anything more modern I wanted to test would often crash the PC, and it would get some sort of program closure even if I use Linux. But for those five-year-old titles and some more modern but very simple indie games, I was definitely impressed. I mean, this is a two-watt envelope, and it's doing well. I will add, just quickly, that you can do some streaming on here, or recording. It's actually really impressive. I was able to do some 480p and even some basic 720p streaming on this little thing. Nothing intensive in terms of gameplay, and also it was a little bit of a struggle as I did have to lower the game's resolution and settings to get it to do this. But you know, when we consider that we were able to only run 240p at like 12 FPS on the old atoms, and now I can quite comfortably keep an audience entertained on the new ones, well, you know... It is quite impressive. I will definitely probably try and stream this again at some point, just to give it a little bit more of a test in the future. But still, you can do some streaming on this if you want to, just as a brief little test. Just to round us off with some synthetic benchmarks in case people want to compare, 3D Mark's Fire Strike benchmark placed our graphics side of things as being slightly worse than the HD 6450, which is a card we've used before, and you know what, that's not actually too far from the truth, although we were more bandwidth limited than that graphics card. And CPU wise, it performed okay, with 1507 on that side, which of course is very decent. Which, you know, explains why with 100% utilization in some physics-based tasks, you can actually see it doing some very, very impressive things. And it also explains why Source Engine games seem to work very well, as they seem to utilize the processor as much as possible. And also explains why other games could struggle when they couldn't use it as much as possible due to lack of utilization. But still, it shows that there is some power in this little 2-watt beast. Something I keep harking on about, because this is 2 watts. That's really, really impressive to see all this running on that. So, you know what? 
This little atom has really proved a point. It's a powerhouse in such a little power envelope. And so many people have told me how terrible it was to use. In fact, the people that even lent me this, thank you very much to Mike on the Discord for lending this to me, told me it was utterly terrible. And you know what? I can see exactly where the issue is. It's not so much the Atom that was terrible, it's, it's brilliant, I can't praise it enough. In fact, I'm kind of sad that we won't be getting any more. It's just the devices it made itself into. Now, I don't doubt that you've already gathered that from how many times I've said it in the video, but it can really make it seen in some of those instances where we wouldn't have been limited if we could just stick an SSD in it, or maybe stick a little bit more RAM, or if we weren't artificially limited to single channel memory. Now, the highest end ones made their way into the Microsoft Surface, which is a legitimate product, but anything higher end than this, I can't find any reason to get it, because, you know, a Ryzen-style system costs about as much as an embedded Atom system, or something like that. There are a few compute sticks that had them, but even then, you know, you can sometimes get them to boot off something else, and they are never exactly good value. But, you know, I went into this expecting the worst, and I came out feeling like this little thing's achieved something, it's redeemed itself, it turns out four weak cores and a bit of RAM, can combine together to make a solid little system, and I'm glad that I've been given the chance to test these. So please do let me know if you've enjoyed this, and if you are a little bit sad that we won't be seeing any more of these. Because everything from light games to media playback was really solid, it's just a shame that they are paired with such terrible storage, because that EMMC memory, it's terrible. It's something that's also plagued a lot of devices with a similar age to this. Uh, people might remember the Google Nexus 7s. Now I've fixed one of those before, now that was fun, but that's a topic for another video. Anywho, I hope you've all enjoyed this, maybe found it helpful. So maybe it's time to dust off the dust from your old Atom and find out if you want to use it. I'll catch you all later. Good night. So I hope this rather large, rather big undertaking was rather enjoyable. It did take a while to test these atoms given the form factor that they're available in and I do hope it's been useful to see what they can do. So thank you very much, you can always like and subscribe for more like this and I'll catch you in the next one.